that he wants to go out. Not all there. Hello. Hello. Rebecca, thank you for the documents you sent. Oh, no problem. Okay, so it's 7.33. We do have a quorum. We have Joan, Rebecca, Karen, and Elaine. I don't expect any voting to be done tonight. I just wanted to present the situation. Um, before we get started, um, should we do a present to speak? Is there anybody who has anything they would like to say before we get started? Okay, then the whole reason for calling this meeting was because of what the Board of Finance has done with our budget. I just wanted everybody to know. So we requested $297,000 they cut 43,000 and have approved 254,000. Now, two different people came up with that number in two different ways. Pete Tanaka simply said, we're giving 5% increase. And that worked out to 254,000. Steph Summers, who is the chair of the BOF, came up with the same number. She said they were less than $1,000 apart with their calculations. Um, in a different way. First of all, she said that they were not, hold on a second. Kathy just asked to be let in. Okay, it says Kathy's joining. So we'll just give her a second. Okay. Hi, Kathy. Um, so now we have everyone except Joy. So we have Rebecca, Karen, Joan, Elaine, and Kathy here. So as I was saying, I just wanted to, to go over what the Board of Finance have decided. So asking for 297,000, they approved $254,000, a $43,000 cut. Pete Tanaka came up with $254,000 by saying that that was a 5% increase from last year. Steph Summers came up with it in a different way. The first thing she did was take off the $18,000 for the programmer. She said that she wasn't going to be approving new employees for anybody. Now, I don't know if that's really true or not, but she said that they were not approving new mm -hmm. employers employees so that's eighteen thousand right off the top then we we had a fifteen thousand dollar grant and instead of taking into account that that grant had been applied for for a very specific thing they counted it as revenue and once they count the fifteen thousand dollar grant as revenue it looks like we got a lot of things that came in last year um and there were some other things that she looked at. But as I said, before Kathy came in, the um, the result was that both she and Pete came up with almost the exact same number. Steph said it was less than $1,000 apart. Um, a couple of things were said. One was that the Board of Finance was under the impression 
that when we voted for Hope and Deb to be co-directors, that Deb would still be doing programming as part of her co-director job, which meant that we didn't need to have a programmer. And I'll be perfect, perfectly honest with you. I think we kind of screwed ourselves last year by putting in $13,000 for a programmer in the budget and never hiring someone. I think if we had hired someone, it would have been easier to just ask for a pay raise than to ask for that as a new position. Um, the town, some of the town people are still arguing that two directors are costing us more than a director and a assistant director, whatever. And I can't seem to get anybody to understand that that is not true. And there were still some comments made about the organization and I don't, I don't know exactly how Pete Tanaka put this, but that the library was not doing what they were supposed to, the board was not doing what they were supposed to, and that the library had done better under previous directors. So it, we're not gonna take any votes on this tonight. Joan's laughing. You're muted, Joan, I have no idea what you're saying. I looked the wrong place to unmute it. Uh, we're unmuted because you don't want no minutes, what I feel like saying. Um, <clears throat> the idea um, that um, they think this, they, they think that, well, tough. I, I told them at the second meeting where you couldn't be there that um, I did have a copy of the original um, vote you know the original um motion etc so and it says nothing about the programming whatsoever in that motion so that's not part of the agreement at all um, that's all and the idea that they can say we're taking the um programmer off the table they they can't cut line items that's our choice they give well, us a, a I'm, I'm not saying number. that they're they're in particular cutting line items, but that's where Steph pulled the money out of. So now it's our well, responsibility to figure out where we take the $43,000 out. Well, I guess that's right. And we have to look at, you know, um, one of the things they said that I thought was interesting um, is that we have not um, invested the money that we do have very well. And uh, Re Rebecca was there and she got to hear in all of this too. Um, and um, she, she, they're right. They're right. That's a real thing. Um, and since then, um, Stephanie has said to me that um, a good financial planner wouldn't be a bad idea. A fiduciary, not a bank, but a fiduciary you know, mm -hmm. and then they would advise us as to what program. So I looked up, you know, banks today and CDs and stuff and Synchrony Bank, you know, big one that does all the Amazon account and stuff. They have the best CDs. So in order to make the most money, we may not be able to stay locally, even though we'd like to. That's a discussion for another time, but I just opened the idea that Part of our discussions have to be how to increase revenues and then apply those revenues to our budget. Yeah. Um, we're going to have to find money someplace, whether it's good investments, more grants, something. We're, we're going to have to find that somewhere. Um, did they still say something, Joan, at the meeting? Because I didn't necessarily hear anything about the money that we do have and the fact that we have all this money sitting in the bank. Yeah, they said somewhat. Rebecca probably can give you a better clue on that because she paid more attention to numbers and facts and she carried the ball in that meeting rather than me. So tell them, Rebecca. <laughs> uh, I, 
if they mentioned it, it was just in passing. They weren't um, pulling out specific numbers that we have in our accounts. They were just at this that meeting were just asking about the uh, the leftover money from the previous year's budget, and so that's what we we're trying to account for. And that again did come up at the last meeting about leftover money, but they were presented with the paperwork mm -hmm. as to where that money was spent. So yeah. they, they shouldn't have considered that. Yeah. Yeah. We um, gave them a copy of, of that. Yeah. Well, um, I sent, I sent all of that to Steph before they even had the first meeting mm -hmm. because I couldn't make it to the meeting three meetings ago because I sat down, opened my computer, went to log on and Charlotte called. And, you know, she's 21 now. She's got her own job. She's trying to do her income oh. taxes. So I was working on that. And then last week I was on vacation. So um, I did miss two meetings. Yeah. Um, so I don't really know what happened in those. But um, before that, three meetings ago, which would have been the 9th of March, I think it would have been the 9th of March, um, I sent everything. I, I sent a copy of the budget. I sent the list of where the $25,000 went. I sent a list of all the employees, their current hours and their their um, current pay and the pay that the increase that they all need. All of that sort of stuff went to them before that first meeting even. So, um, but I guess the thing that disappointed me the most were the comments that were still being made about the fact that the library is not doing what it should be doing because I thought this board had been working very hard. Um, I wonder if it's just an extension of the we don't like anything different syndrome that pervades a lot of parts of the United States right now. You do something a little bit different and it makes people uncomfortable. And, and I said at the meeting, if it ain't broke, why should we fix it? The books are getting uh, bought, the patrons are happy, the bills are getting paid, the place is clean and well organized. What do you want? So they don't know, they're just afraid of it. I think if we spend too much time worrying about that, we're gonna make ourselves crazy. Yeah, I know. I just, all I wanted to do tonight was just present the fact that somewhere we have to find either $43,000 from an external source or cut $43,000 from the budget or find some mix in between. Um, lottery I, tickets, what? lottery tickets, lottery tickets. That's what we do. Take our money in the bank and we buy a stadium <laughs> lottery tickets. <laughs> there we go. And I do want to thank Christina Malos for saying in the meeting that the library needs to be supported and we need to be given what you know is necessary to run. So I do want to thank Christina for, for doing that. Um, so this isn't anything that we're going to vote on tonight. It isn't anything that we can probably even make a decision on at the next meeting next week. But I, I think it's just something that everybody needs to think about. And Hope already knows all of this. I saw Hope on Saturday, so I already gave her the information. And she had been talking to Deb at the same time. So I'm pretty sure Deb knows all of it now. Um, so it's just something that we're going to have to figure out what we do. Other than just investing all our money in lottery tickets. <laughs> Can I make it? I, oops, excuse me. May I speak? Is that Mary Pat? No, no this is Debbie. Debbie. This no. is Debbie. Um, Where are you, Debbie? I, I don't even want you to see me because I... I, I you don't, no one needs to see my spatial expressions as far as, you know. That's so you're fine. Are, are you on the link that says JTLs? No, no, no. I'm, I'm with Hope sitting are right you beside with Hope? her. Okay. Um, okay. I have to tell you, I'm, uh, I'm really, I, I, I was shocked to hear what the Board of Finance did. Matter of fact, to me, I, I'm still getting over the gut punch that they did to us. Um, I resent the fact that they're always 
criticizing, ridiculing, oh, hell, they were even laughing at us um, all the time. I don't think whatever we're going to do is good enough. They think that Hope and I are not qualified. I don't know what else we can do to prove ourselves. This library has never been in the best shape as it is right now. The fact that Peter Tanaka, uh, and I, did, I shouldn't have expected anything different. He did that last year when Mike McCooch came to our rescue and gave us a fair uh, uh, per percentage as far as uh, increase goes. Um, the fact that they just randomly took off 5% or only gave us 5% without looking at our needs and wants, uh, kind of like pulling the number out of your hat, I won't say where else, but um, was I think very unfair. And I don't think it's a good practice as far as the Board of Finance goes, as far as being fiscally responsible. When we did two, three years ago, came up with a uh, increase that we needed to be right on track with what we had lost, with what we needed and where we were supposed to be at by all standards, whether it was town employees or where it was uh, statewide, as far as um, what we offered, as far as what uh, people uh, that work here get paid, we were in a spot and we came up with a percentage, which everybody thought was ridiculous, a 57% increase three years ago. Okay, so over the last couple, two, three years, it, it probably, I was thinking close to averaging out what we asked for originally. And at the time, when we had approached the Board of Finance, Mr. Tanaka was graciously going to give us 2%. So the fact he gave us 5% this time, I probably should be thanking him because that was more than I would have expected from him. Um, uh, I, we asked him for less money and we, you know, but I, I, the fact that that wasn't even negotiable and now it's set in stone that we can't do anything where from February 2nd, until last Friday, nothing was said to us as far as where they were leaning or what needed to be cut or any suggestions or recommendations. When we when we approached the town to try to get ARPA money and CIP money, we were told over and over and over again, you know, that this should be something that you should put in your budget. You had to be, if it was less than ten thousand, it couldn't go into CIP ARPA. We couldn't do repairs and maintenance issues or whatever. So under their instruction, their recommendation, their advice, we did exactly what they wanted us to do. Okay, great talk. A lot of talk people, but no support when it came to actually now flip, you know, giving us the money to pay for these things. You know, going going forward, forward cutting $43,000, you, you, it is going to look so different than what we have right now. One thing is, I I am 1000% against anybody cutting the programmer's position. Wrong, wrong, wrong. I cannot say it enough. That is a position that we never had before when we moved into this building, which is, and it, they don't even know how old the library is for God's sakes. It, 20, it, it, oh, again. Hope and I went over that whole board of finance, a Zoom meeting, one, two, three times. I'm not done with it yet when I still have to go over and what I have to say. They didn't even know how old the library was. People don't even come into, they don't even have a library card. They don't come to the library and they make all these decisions as if they know what we're doing. And, and they don't. And then they say, we're not doing it right. And that's come up many, many times. Anyways, back on track as far as the programmer goes. That programmer, we never had a programmer in the old library when it was in hall school when we moved into this building there was a need and necessary that was created 16 17 years ago i know i was the first one doing it and i've been doing it ever since um that job went from a 15 hour job when it started off to a 39 hour job when i when i officially stopped doing it uh two years ago when i said i would help and do the co-directing with hope that was a 39 hour job. That was more than any library director ever had as far as full-time hours. It started with 29 for our director, went to 30 so they could get benefits. Then the last year and uh, two was to 35, which is what Hope and I are getting now. Even as a programmer, they knew then the need 
it was as important of a job. I'm sorry, more important than the director's job. That was what brought people in. You were the face of the library, and 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 you you did do. It was. I often said it could be to, uh, a two people full time job. Just when I think about what was done for advertising, could have been a full time person's job, getting the word out and all the different ways that I had to do, which is even very different looking than what it is today. You didn't even have all this digital stuff going around. So anyways, it is it is important. When we, when we were in the old school building, we did not have programming. We had, uh, Robbie Passardi did two, again, I know because I did them, um, two evening uh, story times with the children, which she did herself. The only time we had programs there was when it was summer reading. And at that time, she would have two or three different groups, people come into the library for that, for that summer, whether it was a birds or mat, a magician, whatever, two, three tops programming, which all consisted of a director calling on the phone and saying, will you come in? Okay. So we needed something more than that. We had a new building. We wanted to bring people in. We weren't in the school anymore. It, again, everything looked very, very differently. So you, you we have a program and the job has grown. Now, when it came again to help out doing the co-directing, that never did I ever say, or even, how do you say, not relate to, not even suggest or, or let me know that that job was no longer going to exist. The programming job is not a director's job. The only thing the director's job part of it is to oversee and be there if the programmer uh, needed help. And yes, they were there for that. Questions, concerns, if I needed physical help with something or whatever, or advice, they they don't they don't do programming. I did this programming for the last two years out of the kindness of my heart, and I because I love my library. I do not get paid for doing the programming job over the last couple of years. I got paid only for the summer reading program part of it last year because I put in over two hundred hours of my own time not library time I'm to done. do that job. Debbie, that. Debbie, I don't mean to interrupt you. We've heard, you know, we know the history, et cetera. No, I, I don't think they do, Joan. I really don't think people do. Well, can we do. You're, you're preaching so to the choir right here. You're preaching to the choir. What I'm going is you cannot get rid of the programming job. That well, is I don't think we will. Library. I think we have to find, I agree with you. We have to find a way to keep it. Where we shot ourselves in the foot, and I'm taking part of the blame of that because I knew better, is we should have stopped you from programming at all this year. That was not in your job description. Oh, it wasn't. And okay, I, so and it, it, back it, it, me, excuse me, excuse me. So we shot ourselves in the foot because they're going to expect it. And I've done the same darn thing in the past. I've done it to myself. I understand how easy it is. When you see something that has to be done, you go ahead and do it. I understand that. Now our goal has to be to take a look at everything we have and figure out how can we keep a programmer coming. We have Steve. And we can't afford to lose him. And I can't afford this. So let's let's um, focus on past, that instead of the past. Let's look at what's happening in the future. Well, but the past does reflect what the future what the future and present is. One of the reasons why we didn't hire a programmer last year was one always in this place to save money, which is why there wasn't money there, but also because we knew we wanted. Uh, our intern, Steve, who was a volunteer at the time, to take that position. That's why we didn't do the hiring of someone else. We already had some. I know, but, but we shouldn't have done the programming. So they need to know that, too. I think that we should, not if they're not going to pay for programmer and they think we're wasting money, we need to stop doing the programs. Exactly. The people that come once a month, that for the book club, that come for the knitting club, the people who use the building, that's fine. But the kitty hours and things like that, we don't have a programmer. We have two co-directors 
And I think we should stick with the job descriptions. I mean, we didn't ask for this, we got handed this. And I think that's what we're gonna end up having to do. I'm sorry, Elaine wanted to talk. No, you're you're right. And so it is gonna look very differently, but we're gonna we're not gonna be what we should be, what we were. That's right. No, that's right. And that's for really sad. Time. It comes down to everything. Nobody wants to we want all these wonderful things, but we don't want to support and take care of them uh, in the way so that it can be all that it should be and can be. Okay, anybody else? Have yes, Elaine? Yeah, I, I, this is a question coming from my ignorance. Um, and maybe there's some resolution in it. Um, is there a comprehensive list of all the programming that has been offered? Like for, you know, a log of all the programming for a year or whatever. In other words, yes. yeah, you know, just would, would everybody have available to them a list which would see what is being offered and um, maybe to them might justify um, the concerns that you're expressing. Well, you know what, if they would come to the library or, or they would they would know, yes, we do that. Am I going to come up and I do have, but again, you're, we're, you say don't, you know, people know in the history and whatever, but yet when you ask that Elaine, you're, you're asking the same thing that I was just saying with, with Joan as far as, yes, that we, we do have records. Um, why I would have to keep repeating myself over and over again, it, the same thing. Uh, it's almost like if I'm, I, people should know. I'm surprised they don't know. If they don't know, it's because they don't come to the library, you know, kind of a thing. Um, and, and that takes time. That And on that note, as far as, you know, having to repeat and, and doing things over and over and over again for many different reasons. The the whole thing's still about with the co-directorship that I think people need to know that once upon it, well, no. Okay. There was okay. Okay. Deb, I hate to interrupt you, but let's not talk about the co-directors right now. Can you get oh, yeah. Elaine a list of the programs that have been done in the last six months or a year so she can see how often the programs are being run? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not asking necessarily for something to be created. Does the does the library have like a calendar for each month and a listing of what's mm -hmm. being done? Yeah. Well, that's all. Yes. That's twelve would do it. <laughs> One for each month, just to see how often and what the nature, the target audience. I mean, that would all be. You could intuit that from the listing. Yeah, of course it always existed. Always, it's always existed. Um, and on that note, too, you guys talked about Stephanie mentioning having a, a judiciary. I have to laugh because we just had last week USA Financial Year, and they are a judiciary company and, and person. And he's probably been to like USA Financial. That's uh, not a fiduciary. Yes, no, they are. USA, no, USA I, Financial. Doesn't that have its own products? No. No, and I've asked this question, yeah. and, and he is a fiduciary. Where it's okay, it's like so we, we didn't see her. Him. The board didn't see her. If he has been in our, he's offered. Uh, uh, what do you say? Um, oh, what's the word? Consultant. Not classes. Like um, he's been here over six six times that I've had him here talking about different things. He was just here last. Why didn't you have him with the board? We're the ones who have an answer. It wasn't asked. I didn't know Stephanie was looking for this. Again, that's a great suggestion. He's been right underneath our nose forever. And if maybe if somebody else on the board or whatever would come to our meetings or our programs, then it would have dawned on them. It I knew who he was. I know what he offers. I offer programs, like I said, he's been here over six times. And yet, no, I didn't know to do that but he certainly could and would. That would be a very good idea. Yeah. That would be a very good idea. Okay. Yeah, I think that um, the, the bottom line is this. <clears throat> um, we know rather than drop right into cutting line items, which is really hard to do for most of them. And let's take a real look, a good look at our revenues 
and how to increase the revenues, perhaps through investment and see what we come up with. We didn't have any um, revenues put down for this year unless I've got the wrong papers. And it seems that about 14,000 is a uh, good estimate for revenue. Okay, are we still on? Did we go bye-bye? No, we're still here. Oh, okay. We're listening to you. Somehow I've got Bill's emails I'm watching oh. right now, which of course is foolishness. Um, okay, so let me, let me try to get back on. Is this it? I got the agenda. Yeah, the, the whole column is blank. You're right. Where did you come up with 14,000, Joan, just to go back to 21? Um, I'll tell you what, because the last couple, Couple of years. Let me see if I can find the papers. Um, last this year, twenty two twenty three, as of twelve thirty one, revenue came out to eighteen thousand one ninety four. Now right, there was a fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand of that was a. Grant. There was a five. Excuse me. There was a five thousand, almost six thousand dollar grant. Okay. So I went back to another year, the year before, and we had 14,005. So I said, okay, if we pump it up a bit, I think we could perhaps do 14,000. We also have never had like a major fundraiser that the board has sponsored. And um, so that, that could bring our revenues up a little bit more. So, um, you know, I think that looking at that, maybe we aren't realistic in our revenues and we have to take a look at that. But I think that talking with the fiduciary is a good way to get started. Okay, Deb, is there any way you can ask him to come to our next board meeting next Wednesday night? I can ask. I don't know what his plans will be, but I can find out. Yeah, just just ask. If If he can't make it, that's fine. But if he can... We'll put them right. on the agenda. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have anything? Okay. Like I said, the plan was tonight was not to to do anything, but to but to think about what happened. And I hadn't heard anything about getting a fiduciary, so I think that's a good plan. Um, well, I. Um, Stephanie had suggested it too. Yeah. So the board yeah. the board of finance will be very happy to hear we did that when we have to go back for more money in the spring. You know? Okay. Anybody else? Okay. The board doesn't have anything else present to speak. Anybody have anything they want to say? Oh, man. Uh, guys, again, one of the things that you had spoken about and also that came up at the last board of finance meeting was this $15,000 that came from the Briggs grant that was part of the ARPA money that the um, Economic Development Commission had given us. I don't think lawfully, legally, you can spend any of that money towards budget or bills. We, kn we know we can't do it through, you know, for maintenance or whatever. We know we can't do it for, you know, uh, paying staff or whatever that money also uh is a lot of it uh is spoken for it just hasn't been spent yet so uh them including that in that forty three thousand that they're taking away and thinking that you know we're going to use it on other things uh somebody needs to check because I, I i would i'm i'd be pretty surprised if they'd let you spend it on anything but what it's supposed to be spent on and it was right in our application yeah. what needed to be and we did fill it out and it wasn't it again it's earmarked it's it's on this year's budget um and we are going to be spending it we've already spent a little bit of it um so just you know just be aware that that probably is not going to be around next year mm -hmm. for the 20 23 24 mm -hmm. budget and and yeah. and I and I'm pretty sure you we should. I don't think them recommending us using that is was. And I don't know why uh, Christina was right there. They're on ARPA. So wasn't the select woman. I I don't know 
how that kind of thought got past them and okay because or included in the fourth three because yeah I I I, I don't think that's I well, can't be 100 sure but one of the things I said when I sent all the paperwork was that they wanted to know why we had what the eighteen thousand dollars we had in revenue was and where it came from and what it was going to be spent on. And I said in the paper that $15,000 of that was the EDC grant. And I, I, Deb basically sent me the, the application. She cut pictures and I put all of that directly in. The year before or the two years ago, I don't know, we had the, the um, pandemic money. None of this stuff is a regular steady income and most of it has come from the fact that we had the pandemic and there's ARPA money and there's EDC and there's whatever this is this is not a steady stream and mm -hmm. I explained that to them when I gave them the letter well that's and just I think so much people aren't considering the times of the last two and three years uh you know I know they're thinking how it's affected each individual entity in town but that was the same reason where there was you know they were upset because there was money left over and we weren't going to spend it just on anything that stuff was earmarked too for many reasons lack of materials coming in people uh not enough workforce to do the jobs the work that need to get done around here there are many uh things out of our control that because of covid and the circumstances uh that money was not spent and it wasn't spent because it's it's it needs to still be spent. Again, that was earmarked. So I know it looks good, like oh, teacher got all this extra money left over, but that isn't the case. That isn't the fact. Like I okay. said, I I put that in the letter that I sent to them. Anybody else have anything they want to say? Well, I think summarizing. We looked at our income. We have fiduciary come see what we can do about investing. I stepped, more appropriately. Yeah. Kathy? I, I just wanted to, I stepped out for three minutes to go to the bathroom. What did we come up with when we were, I, you were looking at the revenue end when I walked away. Can you summarize what you, what I might have no. missed? Well, I, I kind of, I, I kind of estimated that um, looking for $14,000 a year revenue was doable. Okay, not guaranteed, but I think it, it is doable to get based on the pat on the past. By way of we investments. Want, we're gonna have to come up with something. You mean by you way know. of investments or CDs or something? No, that that's just the people that gifts of people give okay. us and things okay. like that. You know, that's the that part of it. And uh interest, yeah, you're right, the interest in, is part of it. Um, so I think that um Fourteen thousand is doable. I'd like to see it more. And if we do have the fiduciary come in and start to work with an investment counselor, and uh, kind of uh, spread our wings, we've used local banks recently, which is, you know, my my personal choice. But I'm not sure that's the smartest route for us right at the moment. And I think Rebecca would have a better feel on that than I do. Well, I think it's something that, that needs to be looked into and not, I mean, I mean, we can't really say anything until we look into it deeper. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And well, see. take our time. This doesn't affect until July. Right. So we, yeah. we have some time to think about things and think seriously about what we need to do. So, but, uh, Boy. anybody okay. else have anything yeah with with all that we're we're thinking about for this year again you know it's going to look different and i it's going to hit us at one time if if we if they don't give us more money now which they're obviously not going to we can't go backwards um we're going to have the same problem as we've had the years in the past and going forward to the next year at some point they're going to have to get, you know, we are going to need the money. They're going to have to give us the money to do what needs to get done. This is this is not going to be sustainable. 
even with all this stuff talking about having a judiciary come in and yeah, that's all great and good to make money, but that's not something that is going to continue year after year or whatever. It, you know, it'll, it'll be nice. It'll be a little nest egg and it'll get spent real fast and easily. But again, that's, that's a lousy foundation to be being, you know, built upon for what we need to have. Okay. Can I, can I move yeah. that we, yeah. um, that we adjourn? Well, well first, I, the, we've got the present to speak. Does anybody want to say anything? Besides scream? <laughs> what is our next step? I mean, where, where do have we left this? Um, Deb's going to see if the fiduciary from, where is it, USA Financial? Is that what it is? Could possibly come to our, our regular meeting next week. And then we're all going to have to, to talk about where money can be created, where money can be saved. Um, and this is going to be, it's, it's going to take a while. Okay. It almost seems like a setup to me. I mean, the number they're asking to have cut is almost the exact amount of one of the co-director salaries. So I, I hope we can come up with that revenue because otherwise it seems like they're forcing us into a corner where we make um, staff cutting. Can, yeah, I uh, prob probably will not be able to be here next week. I think the hordes are descending on me. Um, Wednesday, and uh, so I'll have all all kinds. Of... I I think I think we need an in person meeting at the library next week, and I'll tell you why. Because I won't want to be able to get out of here in all this confusion. So um, it works very well for me. <laughs> I don't have to be well. The the one meeting that we had in person the end of last year when we were talking about um, submissions to CIP, actually worked very well to be yeah, in person. Yeah. Um, I thought we had voted then in order to keep it in person, weather dependent. I thought that's what we had said, but I don't think- We, we, don't talked, know, we, we talked about motion. it, but I don't think we ever voted on anything. I don't think we had a formal motion, no. Yeah. But so, um, I, think, I think if you're gonna do a work thing like this, you're going to need the time and that we um, take the regular agenda and condense it as much as possible and um, spend our time on this uh, on this idea of increasing revenues. Okay. And then how do people feel about doing it in person next week, though? What? So while we, well, we're talking about next week another special meeting because next week shouldn't be our regular meeting yeah no i'm talking yeah. about the regular meeting yeah and then like two weeks I'm i have no yes. idea what yes. today is <laughs> yes it is come to think of it oh yes. so our, our regular meeting should be april 3rd right or no no, no second no. April, 10th, right? april april 12th something like that yeah oh, good. Uh, yeah, yeah. I will be away. I will not be able to attend that one because it's my April break. And that was my doing. I know I changed us to the second. Well, anyway, I, I can't attend that one. Okay, well, it's it's not next Wednesday like I thought it was. So I've got okay. some time. So if people can get back to me about whether or not they feel like an in-person meeting would, would help, we can certainly do in-person. Actually, come to think of it, if it's Wednesday, April, hold on. Yeah, oh, here we go. April 12th. I, I'm a, I'm home for one day over my April break, so I could do, I but I can't do it in person. It'll just be crazy hectic. So I, I'd have to zoom. Could hybrid be an option? Hybrid yeah. could be an option. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then you can lay the papers out. You can, yeah. you know. Okay, so stuff. so why don't we do that then? I I will post an agenda for the meeting on the twelfth and say that it will be available either in person or on Zoom. Okay. 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 If there's nothing else, Joan, do you want to make your motion that we can adjourn? 
Oh, Let's adjourn. <laughs> I'm tired today. Please, can we adjourn? <laughs> is everybody good with that? Nobody has anything else to say? I'll second that. I'll second okay, that. Kathy seconds. Anybody opposed to, to leaving? Okay, thanks everybody for meeting tonight. I just wanted to, to present this. So thanks everybody for coming. And okay, I'll, thank you, Karen. I'll see you okay. in a week and a half then, two weeks, whatever, whatever that is. I have no idea what day of the week it is. I have no idea what week of the month it is. <laughs> thanks guys. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Okay. Good night. Okay, Rebecca, stay on for one minute, okay?